Hi. The DAC 970A data acquisition system is a fantastic instrument for allowing multiple tests to execute in parallel or for probing multiple different parts of a design simultaneously to capture lots of detail. It is a six and a half digit device and at a high level it is a multimeter with slots at the back instead of sockets for test leads. In reality it does a lot more because it comes designed for interfacing with popular sensors such as thermocouples and strain gauges. It will also measure voltage, resistance including 4 wire for low ohms, current capacitance and frequency up to 300 kilohertz. Each slot takes a module which can handle up to around 40 connections called channels uh, that can be selected at will by the instrument. There are many different types of modules available. Normally you'd configure the instrument to scan through all the channels or a subset at intervals and then chart the results or record to memory. Using this instrument is really nice. It's responsive and has a great display and user interface. At the back, lots of wiring is needed to get the most out of the modules. The instrument is accurate to a fairly similar level to competing products in the same price range. The charts here can be used to quickly see what sort of error and additional noise to expect depending on the measured voltage and the rate of measurement in power line cycles. In brief, it's very accurate, probably more so than the attached sensors will be. When wiring up the modules, you can use shielded cables for keeping out noise. I used braid around wire that was also twisted to further reduce noise pickup. For long-term monitoring, such as mains voltage measurements, a USB memory key can be used and CSV files will be generated. Okay, this system is connected to uh, the main supply via a transformer, so uh, it's safe and it's being scaled up to, to, the, to the mains voltage. Okay, Let's see here, channel, figure the interval here, sweeps infinite, and then plug this in. Get it safe. Log to USB, logging, rows, infinite, clicking on, done. And log to USB here, and then start it up. Simultaneously, the trend and statistics can be observed on the instrument. A useful feature is a built-in alarm outputs. There are four of them at 3.3 volt logic levels, and they can latch or follow the assigned channels when a high or low threshold is exceeded. Here's an interesting use for the instrument. By using low cost strain gauges, it's possible to see how much a board flexes when pushed, perhaps in an enclosure or when screws are tightened. This information is important not just to prevent damage, but also to ensure that sensitive circuitry doesn't have a performance impact. The instrument can directly interface with the strain gauges in several topologies, and the output can be nulled, of course, using a math formula. It was possible to detect slight board flex from just a few grams weight, even without using a bridge arrangement, the measurements were repeatable and appeared fairly clean from noise. In terms of automation, there is USB and Ethernet, and there was no issue getting it to run with Keysight's BenchView software, which provides charts and other views of the data, 
and can export the data in several formats. For programmatic behavior, BenchView has a block type coding system and Skippy commands can be entered in blocks too. This may be a quick way to automate for beginners. Alternatively, MATLAB could be used too. Just a couple of dozen lines of code was sufficient to write a test script for the next use case that I attempted, which was to measure the behavior of a reflow oven and to use it for profiling a circuit board to ensure it gets heated evenly. In production, some products need paint baking on and attaching thermocouples to different parts of the item could be very useful to program the oven for good results. There's four thermocouples plugged into the oven um, and the temperature currently is 24.6 degrees inside there. But we're actually, this location is underground, so if I open this, it's actually cooler, so that will probably start dropping uh, the temperature. Uh, anyway, so I'll close that back up again. So that's logging the temperature every second. Uh, it looks like there's a big difference between the temperatures, but actually the, uh, the, the left hand, the axis is uh, just showing a fraction of a degree at the moment. All right. So, start that. Okay, should be heating now. Yep. <laughs> So this is stage one, uh, where it's aiming to get to 110 degrees C. So yeah, 42, 43. Pretty good. I can't remember what this profile does, but I think it allows 45 or, or 60 seconds to get to 100, 110 degrees C uh, before it moves on to stage two. There's already a discrepancy between the temperatures uh, between the four locations where the, the, the probes are connected. Quite interesting. Okay, 64 seconds have elapsed. Still on stage one. So you can see on the, on the instrument that we're up to around 90 degrees. Okay, 85 seconds. Okay, now we're on stage two, where it should try and reach 210 degrees C. Yeah, temperature's so just shooting up again. Sounds like a cricket. <laughs> really. All right, and now we're on to stage three, where it's uh, removing heat from the oven and doing the cooling process. So it didn't actually reach 210 degrees with this profile, because it was supposed to have gone all up to 210 and then start cooling. But actually, we only, we only reached about 180-ish degrees. So that profile needs modification. Now we can see how quickly the heat can be extracted from the oven. We lift that off and let it cool quicker. This test helped me understand how accurately the oven was controlling the temperature and the best position for the particular board I was using, and also the work that needs to be done to try to resolve the temperature differences inside this oven. During the time spent experimenting with this instrument, I really liked it. 
It can change the way engineers work, especially when getting designs ready for production or for production test. Also for design engineers, it's exceptionally useful for gathering different measurements from multiple parts of a design to understand the behaviour and relationships between things like component temperature or heat movement and power consumption. For scientists, and for more deeply understanding component level behaviour, it is possible to run highly accurate and granular 6.5 digit measurements on different samples simultaneously. A while back I needed to determine diode temperature coefficient for a constant current source and this instrument would have saved a lot of time. We'll also replace separate standalone equipment like temperature loggers and chart recorders and the modern interfaces allow for more data collection and easier processing. I've also now got many diverse requests to use this instrument in the field where it can save tens of thousands of pounds of dollars determining if large boilers need replacing or not and to check solenoid behaviour in industrial lift control. I hope this short video provided a useful overview of the instrument. Thanks for watching.